We handle mostly blood specimens in regards to mostly DUIs. There, we also handle um, vehicle and homicide cases and um, MVAs, uh, date rape cases, those sorts of things. But it's blood and urine specifically. We get the sample. We first analyze it for alcohol. Then we move it over into the drug testing portion. Um, again, with the drug testing portion. Um, there's a lot of pre-work that's done on the sample itself before it's actually analyzed. What's the turnaround time usually? On alcohols, we're running around two to three weeks on turnaround time. For um, drug cases, it's somewhere around six. So we're yeah, right probably. about six weeks right now. It's going to be actually sampling a portion up here, uh, which is sort of unique because most any um, analysis is actually going to be sampling a liquid portion, but this will actually sample a headspace portion. And it can do that because alcohol is volatile and will rise up into that space. In toxicology, they will do the drugs in the, in the blood, in the body, in the urine. Here we actually have the physical cocaine, pills, marijuana. So any law enforcement in the Upper East region will send their drugs to us and we analyze them. Is there any one drug you see more of than any other? Oxycodone. Which is kind of interesting because when I started in 94, that wasn't the case. It was a lot of crack. It was a lot of cocaine. And we rarely see cocaine and crack anymore. We see a lot of pills. I mean, pills beyond belief. <laughs> we have chemicals that we use, and, and different chemicals will extract different drugs. And just based on experience and, you know, after your training, you kind of realize which ones work, which ones don't. And we extract and get just the, the pure drug itself. We take that pure drug and run it on our instrumentation and identify it. That is the alternative light source. So what they would use that for is screening of sheets or anything else for body fluids. In normal light you don't see anything and then with the use of this light over the top of it you can see that stain that actually appears in the sand. Okay. So that's what we would see there. It helps us identify where a stain might be and so we would circle that and then come back and do additional testing on it if there's uh, basically if there's semen or sperm present. But this stage, this is what we consider a preliminary test. Um, it only is going to say that something might be present. It doesn't say that it is present. Okay. So it gives us something to go forward. I mean, if we were just looking at that pair of pantyhose now, in and of itself, you wouldn't really be able to tell where the staining is or if there's any there at all. Right. But if you use this light source, then it helps you identify, for example, that stain right there. And then we can take that forward and do the test that would help us confirm whether or not semen or sperm is present. So it's a pointer, basically. Here's yes. something that we need to check out. Right, right. And it's um, it's useful for things that are really large, like um, clothing, uh, bedding, sheets, things like that, that if you just look, you, you wouldn't have any idea where to start looking. So this gives us an idea of where to look.